of heaven and hell those who have made a hell out of themselves are always aspiring to go to heaven when life feels like hell we hope that when we go up there everything will be fantastic now what is in heaven according to hindu lore the food is very good in heaven if you are a foodie you must go to the hindu heaven nala the greatest chef will himself cook for you and no matter how much you eat the vessels will always be full with food if you go to another place white gowned ladies float around the clouds playing the harp for you all the time if you like that kind of ambience you must go there and elsewhere you will encounter burgeoning problems if that is what you are looking for you must go there but how to go to heaven this happened in alabama at a sunday school the teacher was going full fire but the audience was not like you they were tiny tots part of their catch them young policy the teacher was going all out and the children were sitting shell shocked suddenly he stopped for dramatic impact and asked what do you have to do to go to heaven little mary in the front bench stood up and said if i mop the church floor every sunday morning i will go to heaven absolutely he said another little girl said if i share my pocket money with my less privileged friend i will go to heaven correct he said another boy said if i help people who are in need i will go to heaven correct he said little tommy in the back bench stood up and said you got to die first well that is the qualification if you want to go to heaven you must die first when you die depending upon your culture you will be buried cremated or offered to the birds or animals so you left your body here and went to heaven without a body what are you going to do with good food and virgins you know they talked about the special patra where how much ever we eat it does not get empty you must understand that is because nobody who had a body went there whatever bodiless people eat it will stay right there so naturally the vessel was always full and that is also why they remained virgins forever we have been dealt these kinds of stories for a very long time for thousands of years you can't be telling the same story at least come up with a better story a heaven where wifi is free there is nothing wrong in enjoying a story but believing a story is stupidity how long will you tell yourself fairy tales it is time as human beings we show some evolution you must stop the bloody stories and start looking at the truth about your existence right now some people want you to believe that the moment you die you go to heaven and there will be a party organized there all your relatives and friends are waiting for you and you will have a great time you must understand that when you die you lose your body but still you are here you do not go anywhere it is just that the dimensional shift has happened from being embodied to disembodied or from physicality to subtler physicality it is not a geographical shift from here to heaven or here to hell or wherever it is and the most important thing is what happens after is not based on god's retribution or that he is angry with you and that he must hang you or burn you in fire or fry you in oil the large scale marketing of heaven and hell as destinations for the afterlife was done by the religions of the world to bring control in society when they did not know how to control individuals or groups of people they came up with an idea okay if we cannot punish you now we will get you there and for all the goodness that you show if we are not able to reward you here we will reward you there 
or if you were miserable they said ayo don't worry when you go there everything will be okay they provided solace if someone is in a deep state of suffering you say don't worry when you go and sit in god's lap everything will be okay it is a psychological tool it is fine when people are in extreme states but don't brand it and sell it everywhere because it is not going to work like that if it is a psychologist saying these things it is okay but if you really make them believe everything is going to be better somewhere you will only mess up their lives now slowly heavens are collapsing in people's minds because if you just ask three questions about it it will collapse the human race has come to a point in time where intellect is firing like never before more people can think for themselves today than ever before in the history of humanity once human intellect becomes active inevitably it will ask questions i think in the next 25 years in a maximum of 40 years the scriptures and the heavens will collapse completely it is already collapsing in many ways in individual minds still people don't have the courage to voice it or it is not articulated in their mind yet but it is collapsing today the grip of heaven and hell upon people has all but worn out compared to the number of people who believed that they would go to heaven in the previous generation the number of people who believe they could go to heaven in this generation has fallen very drastically everywhere in the world that hope is collapsing and in the coming few decades it will collapse even more rapidly this has many consequences for the world human beings seek heaven basically because they seek pleasantness if right from your childhood you were told that god lives in heaven but it is a horrendous place you would not want to go there you would say no i will pray from here itself but i don't want to go there so essentially a human being seeks pleasantness in their experience physically mentally and emotionally he or she wants the very life process and surrounding to be pleasant if these things happen are we fulfilled no it is just that if you have learned to be pleasant only then you can explore the different dimensions of life if you are in different states of unpleasantness your whole life will go in just seeking happiness people are just wasting their whole life to achieve something called happiness actually it is not even happiness they have given up that too they just want peace of mind today this is the highest goal in their life so once heaven collapses in people's mind people will try to maximize their life here the initial maximization happens with greed and desire but when people get frustrated and realize that having more does not make life more in any sense they want to have the alternatives right here in a big way they are getting drunk and drugged right here this is not about looking at it morally it is about the kind of damage it causes to human intelligence and human consciousness health of course is a concern but if someone does not mind dying a few years younger i have no problem but the damage these chemicals cause to human possibility is our problem when this happens to 90% of the human population the next generation that we produce will be of much lesser quality than what we are that is a crime against humanity because the whole movement of life is such that it should get better and better once the real damage has happened at that point trying to turn people around is not going to work you cannot advise someone who is on chemicals try counseling a drunkard or a drug addict or someone who is on continuous prescription medication you will understand what i am saying you cannot turn them around just like that because that is the nature of chemicals it makes you feel enhanced 
either in terms of health peace joy ecstasy or whatever because it makes you feel enhanced artificially there is no way people will come off that so before everyone becomes a drunkard or a drug addict it is important that the raising of consciousness happens and we are able to teach them how to sit here totally blissed out and stoned by themselves without any substance otherwise in the next 50 years you will see 90% of human population will be on some kind of chemical existentially there is a little bit of a basis for the notions of heaven and hell it is because your life does not end with death it only takes on many other forms after that it can take on pleasant forms or it can take on very unpleasant forms depending on many factors it is this pleasant forms that we refer to as heaven or swarga and the unpleasant forms is naraka or hell as we already saw earlier these are not geographic locations they are forms taken by the being after the body is dropped if you go beyond all forms then we say it is a mukti or liberation a spiritual seeker is not interested in going to heaven they neither want to go to hell nor heaven they want to go beyond this duality of both hell and heaven the first thing that yoga attacks in heaven and hell as long as there is heaven and hell the technology for inner welling is meaningless the process of moving towards one's liberation is meaningless since now there are two places to go either you end up in a bad place or a good place your whole life becomes focused upon somehow earning a ticket to the good place you don't have to bother about how you live humanity has lived as grossly as it has mainly because of the assistance of the religion they preach it does not matter what you do if you just believe this this and this your ticket to the good place is set so if you do not destroy the heaven and hell that is functioning within you right now there is really no movement towards truth there is a beautiful story in yogic lore there was a yogi who was over 84 years old and he started going about declaring to other yogis around him you know i am going to die and go to heaven shortly this whole thing amused the other yogis one day they stopped him and asked how do you know that you are going to heaven do you know what is on god's mind so the yogi replied i don't care what is on god's mind i know what is on my mind yoga gives you the technology to make yourself pleasant whatever the ambience may be that is all he was trying to say both hell and heaven are still part of the duality what we refer to as liberation is total dissolution you neither go here nor there you don't go anywhere because you just dissolve this is why for a spiritual seeker neither god nor heaven is the goal mukti or liberation is